Hello guys! Alright, I'm back at this elevator, except I've changed it. So, I took JL's design and kind of made it my own. So I got rid of the pressure plate, and I hooked it up to a clock. And I've got the clock set up with tripwire, so that it will kind of time... It will shut itself off if there are there is no more flow of items through the tripwire but it will also take a while before it does so. So after the last item goes through, this thing, I think right now it might cycle through about three times still, so that should get any items that basically have made it past the string and could be sitting here. So that's just to make sure that this thing just, no items shouldn't make it up. So I thought I'd show you guys what I've done. That was just gonna be a real quick video. And yeah, this is what I plan on building in my world. So the redstone's not the prettiest at the moment. It's more just functional, but uh, most of the circuitry is very similar to JL's. I pretty much just modified or modified things when I took out the components. So I could go over real quick what is happening if I can get at the wiring. Down here is the clock. So this torch, these two repeaters, and that piece of dust. So the clock will turn on when this line of redstone dust turns off. And this line of redstone dust is being held on right now by RS Norlatch, which are these three blocks, that torch, and those pieces of redstone on top. I finally used it. yippee ki yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, this thing turns off, will change states when it gets a pulse. So the first pulse will come from the tripwire. Tripwire pulse comes along here. Uh, this is just to dodge that. And power gets sent into this blocks and splits the signal in two different directions. One direction will flip the state of this RS Norlatch, which will turn off this redstone dust, starting up the clock. Second signal comes up here and turns off this torch, which will deactivate all this redstone dust, which will turn on these torches. What these torches do is they control the reset for the RS Norlatch. So it's a kind of a time delay. And the way this works, originally I kind of saw it actually on Ethos uh, when he's doing the map making. He had a very um, a basic design. And then me and uh, Zacky Boy were working on one of his custom maps, a tower control map. And we kind of came up with this little contraption to make it, to an extend it. So you basically have to have this signal turned off for a, sig a determined amount of time, depending on how many repeaters you have. And if it is, then the signal will get to this block and will turn off this torch. However, if you don't have this torch turned off long enough, so at any point if this torch turns off, then the whole timer resets and it has to start from the beginning. So the signal will kind of make its way through, but then, actually this will be on. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'm explaining all too well. So this will be off. And these will be on when the machine starts running. So then any time the machine starts to turn off, for instance, like no items are passing through that string, this torch turns off, or will turn on, I guess. Yeah, will turn back on, like this state. And then any signal, so these would all be lit up at that point. And then as soon as these return to this state, the delay in the repeaters would start to snake its way out. But if at any point this turns off, everything gets lit back up and the whole thing's reset to default. So we could show you when I turn the machine on, if that makes, that might help. And I have made it so it does only need to be three wide and I haven't had any issue with items popping out the front or back. I've also modified it just slightly so it's no longer two pistons because we don't have that pressure plate. I just have one piston, but exact same design as on JL, same uh, falling edge detector, etc. And the first thing the clock activates is the piston below, so that will push up a block, uh, which in my case is the ice block. So that will push up the block into the hollow space, which is, where are we? Uh, that guy, uh, I don't think this thing is reset right now. I have to see about that. Okay, so that's the hollow space. So the items will get pushed up into here. And then once that piston 
fires, the items will go up vertically. I'll have to see. That is not the first time I've seen that not reset properly, so this may not be triggering quite right. Maybe we'll just add another delay, see if that helps. So I think that one's actually getting locked up and not pushing back when it's supposed to. Okay, so I've got, again, an inventory full of items. This time I did TNT. So I will clear my inventory. And let's fire this up. The only other thing I did is when I introduce items into this stream, occasionally they can get stuck on that edge and they will sit on the tripwire. So I've put this pane of glass that will kind of, the items will hit that, drop down, and they should be relatively in the center. So that shouldn't happen. All right, how loud is my sound? Because that might be annoying. Okay. So let's see. So same idea. Bottom block pushes up. And then that block pushes up. Or pushes in. And then once it retracts, that one should fire in and reset the machine for the next one. So occasionally items do get stuck right there. But then once the ice block retracts, they get thrown in and are ready for the next cycle. So over here you can see this torch is constantly cycling on and off. So every time an item goes over that tripwire, I might change that. Every time an item gets yeah, pushed over that tripwire, this will pulse on, which will pulse this off. And every time this pulse is off, all these torches come on and reset this thing. So this is the delayed reset. So until all the redstone signal gets cycled through, like snaked out and hits that block, this machine won't turn off. So you can see it's trying every once in a while. This will turn off, but then the signal comes back and resets it. So it's never given the chance to actually cycle through. But it will once we run out of items. And this only needs to be as long as, I don't know if it has to be this long. Okay, we're, this is now out of items. Let's go see if we can catch it. Okay, you can see now the signal is snaking out. And then the machine will finally shut off. So I think really all you would possibly need is a second cycle, actually. So as soon as this item goes through, this machine should fire at least twice. But I might set it up so it fires at least three times just for... Just to be sure. And then let's go up top and see where are the items. I didn't throw them all the way to the top. They're just at the first level here. There they are. And I enclosed it further. I can make it all just in one little cube. And there they are. And we should get them all. And we did. Cool. All right, guys, that's it. So this is kind of what I plan on building in my world. I'll probably play with the redstone a bit. Um, if you're interested, I'll throw up a link for this... Uh, world and you can check it out yourself but yeah thank you for watching guys um, if you do this is the start button this is the stop button <laughs> simple as that all right guys take it easy bye bye